thank you so much for joining me in another video. So as you can tell, based on the title, we are talking about Zoe Kravitz, specifically her style, her handbags, how she wore them, and what we can learn. Thank you guys so much for requesting this video. Keep those requests coming. Considering I've like talked about people like the Olsen twins, there is kind of similar approaches to their style that I think they both share, but in different ways. As I was doing like research on Zoe Kravitz, one theme about her is she's kind of the definition of cool. Coolness is very much a subjective thing. Like no one can really define what coolness is. So I kind of wanted to break apart like why Zoe Kravitz is this cool girl. I never really knew who she was frankly until recently. Every time I saw her it was like oh I really like her style not really knowing so much about her. She was in like the recent Batman movie. She's directing films now. This like theme of coolness is something we're gonna talk a little bit about. But again like guys I'm not really an arbiter on what is cool. I was never the cool kid in high school. When we think about what coolness is it's just ultimately a subjective thing. And so let's just get into it. The first bag I want to talk about is the the Saint Laurent I Care, I Care, I Care. I don't know how to pronounce this, but the I Care, I Care bag. We've seen this on social media a lot. It's like one of these bags that social media marketing, influencer marketing is definitely at play. When we saw this bag on her, it was definitely that as well. Like to me, these are marketing pictures. Like these are her wearing this bag and she is this it girl. Batman just came out. Here's the new Saint Laurent bag. It looks really more so exaggerated on her very petite frame. If you're a cool girl you're gonna wear this bag it's not even just like city girl downtown like she lives in like the coolest part of town the kind of girl that wears this bag knows the coolest bars the coolest restaurants the coolest clubs the coolest cafes she just has this cool effortlessness about her while she wears this bag this is such a hot bag right now who knows where it's going to be in a year I think this bag is just trying to say like bigger bags are back and we want to make as big of a statement as possible and the kind of person that wears this bag really doesn't care about looking classic like she doesn't care about having the most classic timeless bags because she knows she's gonna have a new bag every season it doesn't really matter if like this is just a trendy bag like she's not looking to build like a capsule wardrobe of like the most classic pieces fashion is whatever is now and then in six months it's out and that's okay because she's gonna buy another bag obviously not the most sustainable thing but that's what fashion wants this idea of like coolness is very much also this marketing strategy right to constantly feel like you have to keep up another point about this bag is she's like a YSL or Saint Laurent ambassador the face of YSL and many ad campaigns I think it makes sense right ever since Eddie Slaman was the creative director it really became this edgy like rock and roll brand like this rocker chic edgy girl but like also with like a Parisian flair like you don't see that Parisian flair so much but you definitely see that like edgy aspect and Anthony Vaccarella's YSL there's some like subtle changes though one thing that he's been doing though that kind of bothers me why this bag also kind of bothers me it's almost like the bag looks too Chanel like with the quilting and everything I remember watching Mel in Melbourne and she was doing like this looking at handbags with her husband sort of thing and he basically said the bag looked like a Chanel apron. That's kind of, when YSL does the diamond quilting, this is my issue. I don't like when YSL does this because it looks like it's trying to be like Chanel, but it's like more affordable. Although like how much more affordable is this bag relative to the 22 bag? I don't think there's like a huge price difference. YSL bags are definitely like much cheaper, like especially with Chanel's price increases. But like when you do this diamond quilting, it makes it look like you're trying to be like Chanel. And I don't like that. Like I like a lot of YSL, but I don't like when YSL does this. They could have done something else. I don't know, maybe they, they could have done like a triangle quilting or like they do the chevron quilting, which is kind of that like Y shape. I don't know if it would have been as effective. I don't know. Okay, so handbag number two. So this is a bag by The Row. And if you're not familiar, The Row is the fashion line by the Olsen twins. You should check out my video on the Olsen twins where I talk about their handbags and their style. But it's kind of like this like really like slouchy hobo bag, minimal, simple, it looks like a bag by the row with no branding, very understated, very minimal. And shout out to Steph Balanag because she also inspired this video where she asked that I talk about the row, but like talk about how Zoe Kravitz wears the row versus how the Olsen twins wear the row and how they both have like totally different styles. One thing about the Olsen twins and like Zoe Kravitz, there's kind of already a lot of similarities, right? Like they're both women in their like early mid thirties. Like they're also very petite as someone that is also petite. Like I always joke how I'm like an Olsen twin with a mom bod. I can totally see as like a petite person when you see other petite girls dressing in a 
non-conventional way. You just like notice it. Like you're like, oh, how, how'd she do that? And they're also kind of at this pivotal point in their careers. I actually think the Olsen twins, like the row has like a lot of potential because like when you think about designers, right? And even like Zoe Kravitz, but like fashion designers design clothes well into their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s. Zoe Kravitz, like she's talked about this in interviews before, how like she really hated her 20s and how she feels more herself in her 30s. There's kind of like the similar like trajectory of like finding their own styles and like what they wanna pursue, and what their like true passions and interests are. But they also have very different styles as well. So when we just look at the way Zoe Kravitz wears this bag, you can tell there's like similarities, but when she wears things like slip skirts or other like just basics, it's very different. Like she's channeling what is like a low key like sexiness this understated sexiness that she has that's something that i think the olsen twins just like really avoid zoe kravitz has kind of like this sexiness like this edginess and kind of like there's a more like confidence whereas i feel the olsen twins been in the public eye like they literally don't want anyone to photograph them whereas like i think zoe kravitz there's this willingness to be a little bit more sexy because it's in her personality if you look at her body she has like an amazing body like she's really fit why wouldn't she just things like showing a little bit more skin, you know, maybe not wearing a bra. One of her iconic red carpet looks was wearing one of those kind of naked dresses. And the thing about the way she wears the rose clothing, the clothes are like just there. There's kind of like this like minimalism with like the clothes just being barely there. Like that's kind of how she takes on the rose minimalism. And that's kind of the point of the row. I think when the row was created, when the Olsen twins came up with this idea, create the perfect basics, which started out with the perfect white t-shirt, how to have like these perfect basics. And it's kind of turned into something more of like an abstract approach to fashion, very Phoebe Philo-esque, but I think they're kind of finding their own thing. But there's always this like love for like just extremely like high quality elevated basics you could have. While it's not like the most popular brand, the row has like a pretty broad audience. When you see someone like Zoe Kravitz wear it and then someone like Kendall Jenner wear it, you're like, okay, that kind of makes sense a little bit. But then you also see someone like Jonah Hill wear the row and it's like, oh, okay. Or you see someone like Meghan Markle. You see people with all varying types of style being able to wear the row, being able to take these luxurious basics and just seamlessly like integrate it into their wardrobe. And I think that's the point of the row. Like I think that's what the row wants to do. So handbag number three, I want to talk about is the tell far tote guys this is such a great bag i think it is so like it kind of just like sums up her style perfectly i think these three brands san laurent the row and tell far it paints like a perfect picture of what her style is the brand itself focuses a lot on it being an inclusive brand like a brand that embraces diversity like when we think about how a lot of these fashion brands like you know, want to become more exclusive. Only certain people at like a certain income bracket can essentially shop at Hermes. But then you have like a brand like Telfar. It's a brand from Brooklyn, New York that wants to basically do the opposite and say like, no, not for you, we're for everyone. I think that's the thing about Zoe Kravitz. There's nothing about her that is like conservative, traditional, or like classic. Her style's not really classic at all. Like it's very, like I don't want to say the word trendy, but it's just forward thinking. How far is supposed to be a forward thinking and philosophy brand. When we think about contemporary brands, there are often bags that we think of that are like mass produced, probably go on sale. You can find at outlet stores because they overproduce. How far is one of those brands where they have exclusive drops, make limited quantities, they don't overproduce. But the thing about their bags is they're really well priced. Like it's roughly around around $200 US to get one of their bags. And while they are, you know, non-leather bags, like they're synthetic materials, to be able to buy a bag that is very sought after for like roughly $200 is kind of unheard of, like really unheard of today. Most bags, like even that size, like think about like the Louis Vuitton on the go bag, like how that bag's like thousands, like I don't even know what the price of that bag is. This bag is a fraction back to Zoe Kravitz style. I think her carrying this bag and like this really cute mini size symbolizes, I think, her being very like nonconformist, her being, I don't know, like having a very forward and very socially progressive approach to fashion. So in conclusion, I started off by kind of asking or talking about this idea of what coolness is. And I think it's very obvious that coolness is like an attitude. Coolness is not 
not this like definitive thing. It is this thing that like changes and like flows and it changes with time. What is cool in like the 50s, what is cool in the 60s is different in the 70s. It's kind of like this thing that people are always like reaching to emulate. It's always kind of this thing that's admired. We also like have to look at like coolness for what it is. It is a marketing strategy. It is a way these brands, like all of these brands, right? Like how can these handbags become like these objects and signifiers of coolness like if you have any of these bags now it's sort of like you've got style because you're cool coolness is like a marketing thing that we buy into as consumers or like refuse to buy into when i just think about like how like influencers portray like what is cool like if you wear all these handbags or you buy all these shoes or you know you're just with it like you're cool and you've got like a vibe you've got a style the thing about zoe kravitz is there is less of this polished Ness that she has. When we look at a lot of these influencers, they're so like Photoshop. How many filters are on this photo? That's just the nature of what they're doing, right? Like they're incentivized to paint these like pictures of like these really unrealistic but aspirational images that like fashion wants us to aspire. But I think with Zoe Kravitz, what makes her different than influencers is there's kind of this like raw like rough around the edges I feel like the Olsen twins are like this there's this like disheveledness about the way the Olsen twins are like a lot of celebrities they have like a team of stylists like doing their makeup their hair and everything to perfect how they look when they walk out of a restaurant the thing about Zoe Kravitz is like while she is cool and she wears all of these brands that are considered cool and even like you know handbags that maybe are trendy I feel like she doesn't feel trendy to me. It's not classic. It's like being cool without being trendy and I think it's like really hard to do that. The beauty about Zoe Kravitz is like she's the only one that can be like this. No one can really copy her style. A lot of other people can aspire to look like someone like Hailey Bieber and can take inspiration and you can, there's a lot of influencers that look like bootleg Hailey Bieber's whereas there's not a lot of people that can look like Zoe Kravitz and I think that's what puts her a league on her own right like it's not something that can be imitated it is hers and hers alone and I was watching a video where she was being interviewed and the interviewer asked her what is like your biggest lesson or whatever and for her it was like being different is your greatest strength and I think that's it so yeah that is my video Please let me know what you think in the comments. What do you guys think about Zoe Kravitz? What do you guys think about her style? Do you guys like any of the handbags mentioned? I would love to hear your thoughts and thank you so much for joining and I'd love to see you in the next one. Bye.